everyone. We're back with Fishing It Out. I'm your host, Chef Peter Ecker, and we have a fabulous uh, guest with us today, Chef Dave Piper from Toronto. And it's going to be a fabulous show. We're talking about innovative third-party plating and how we're going to be able to bring it home. This is going to be it. So stay tuned. In today's uh, episode, of course, uh, we have our special guest, uh, Chef Dave Piper uh, from Toronto, and uh, it's going to be an exciting show because Dave is going to talk to us a little bit about the trend and the conversation that he was going to bring to us today. I think it was a very important one when we had our pre-call. It was fabulous. I know that you're really going to love it. So why don't we uh, why don't we bring Dave in and uh, and say hi hello to him, and we'll uh, we'll get right in it with dishing it out. Thanks a lot, Peter. Hey guys, I'm happy to be here on SEK today. And uh, like Peter said, we had a fantastic planning session last week, just talking about different trends. And uh, you know what, Peter and I, we're different, different areas of the country, so things might be a little different. But uh, one thing that we both, we were totally aligned on is experience. And you know, we've been, a lot of third party food's been, you know, part of our lives lately. And what Peter and I agreed upon was, just because it, it's takeaway food, um, you know, you don't have to lose that great experience. And now that we're going back to restaurants again, thankfully, um, even that, like, we have to get back to a really not great experience. And one thing I had said to Peter is if I go to eat uh, or if I order in and I look at that food and, you know, I might be a little biased because I'm yeah. a chef myself, but if I look at that food and go, oh, I could do that a lot better. Um, that's not gonna. That's not a great experience, right? So I think today we're gonna just talk a little bit about those great experiences, how to create them, how to uh, just not to forget, you know, how much this matters to people. Like this is really something special, going out or ordering food in and having someone else prepare it. So uh, yeah. I just wanted to talk about that and uh, show you a, show you a dish or two while we do it. Oh, that's fantastic! Yeah, great stuff, Dave. That's awesome. So for any of the viewers that don't know you, of course, Dave is. Uh, jogging on some of his own stuff out there and you might have seen him in some of the social media. Dave, why don't you tell the, the folks a little bit about your experience and uh, what you're bringing to the table today for us, where you've been. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So uh, I'll, I'll keep it to, to recent years, but uh, you know, previously <laughs> um, I did, uh, you know, I was at Langdon Hall. A lot of people know Langdon Hall. It's a fantastic place to work, fantastic place to learn. Uh, after that, I went to, uh, you know, moved to Toronto and spent uh, just about a decade uh, with the McEwen Group, Mark McEwen, uh, you know, doing Mark, uh, Mark's uh, by Mark and uh, North 44 Caters. Uh, somewhere in the midst there, I, I spent a long time as a personal chef as well for a lot of uh, a lot of celebrities and cool people in the city. Um, I did some time as a corporate chef in, in retail, actually, so I have a good grasp in retail. And uh, then for just about almost four years now, uh, here I am as one of the culinary specialists at Cisco. So it's been oh, it's been oh. great. It's uh, I, I like to think I'm quite versed, you know, between catering and retail and uh, you know working in people's homes. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I feel like it's a it gives me a pretty good grasp on things. Well, that's awesome, Dave. Well, thanks a lot for being with us here today. And I know that uh, we talked a little bit before we entered the show a little bit about what we're doing. I've chose a tomahawk pork chop. I know that you got a couple surprises for us uh, up your sleeve and. It's really going to be uh, an awesome uh, show. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what you're going to be cooking, and then uh, then we'll get back uh, to, to me in just a sec. So the crazy thing about what I'm doing today is just about, and I actually feel proud about this. A lot of chefs are going, oh, that's crazy. Uh, but 
it, basically everything is either frozen or out of a can. And I'm telling you right now, uh, Peter, when I'm done this, these plates, uh, they're going to show well. So it's kind of what I'm trying to do here. You know, it's one thing to say experience. It's another thing to say canned food and frozen food. It doesn't yeah. it seems like it, it doesn't really there's no connection there. But I'm going to show you that connection today. And uh, I, really what it's about is, you know, being able to take some of these items that are uh, stable in price these days as well. I mean, there, there's crazy food shortages and, and all kinds of logistic nightmares and, the, you know, inflation. Um, it's been tough on everyone. So the thing that's great about these dishes as well that I'm showing you is anyone can produce them. They, they show like a million dollars. Uh, they do create that experience uh, and they're, they're affordable. They're very affordable and, and it, you know, I, I'm proud of these dishes because I put some thought into them. Um, and, and I hope people can take them away and, and reproduce them themselves. Oh, fantastic, Dave. That's great. We're really looking forward to that. And you really hit on some key notes there in regards to our sort of trend and what's happening with uh, uh, taking takeout or getting third party delivery at home and how you're actually going to finish your food. So we're really looking forward to uh, seeing the dishes that you're going to be creating. So why don't you start dishing it out and start showing us what you got? All right, that's perfect. So the first one is uh, kind of crazy. I'm going to also go ahead, and it's going to be a little risky. I'm going to I'm going to try to plate it how I would plate it if I was at a restaurant, and then from there I'm going to try to slip it over into a takeaway container just to show everybody. You know that that's the experience we we want to have is that that true restaurant food coming out of a, a disposable container. And this could, this is a, it's it's an all or nothing. It's either gonna crumble uh, between my fingers, um, but you're gonna get the gist of it for sure. So let me just pop something in the in the oven here. I've got some chicken to get going and uh, and then we'll start plating right now. Okay, Peter? Okay, that's fantastic, Dave, super. So uh, what I've decided to do was, uh, I'm gonna be working with some of the Cisco branded Tomahawk pork chops. So I got these here all set for us to go. And we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the uh, side dishes that we're going to be presenting. We've got some little prosciutto wraps and asparagus. And I have mine already ready set here to go in the actual takeout container. So once we do the finishing and plating uh, when it's my time, uh, then we'll, uh, we'll uh, definitely be able to get a good grasp on being able to have some fun, fresh finishing at home with your takeout and third party delivery. So Dave, why don't you, why don't you take it away and show us what you got going on? That sounds good, Peter. Thank you. So check this out. First of all, and you might not believe me, but I'm, I'm telling you it's true, and I can I can prove it. Um, I took some home fries actually, and I pressed them uh, into this disc. And what I so here's my home fries, and I used some uh, some charred scallions, just charred some green onions. Took some home fries and literally just crumbled them with my hands. Okay, I took this ring mold, and the idea of this ring mold is essentially for cooking eggs. You would generally put eggs in this to keep that nice round shape. But what I did was I just pressed it in and uh, and gave it a, a, a really good fry. So I have this great, basically this, uh, this humongous uh, home fry here, which we're gonna put on our plate. And then I'm just gonna quickly warm, I have a little bit of garlic butter in the pan. I'm gonna do a couple peppers in here. And so these were these were charred peppers, or they are charred peppers. And they're frozen or from frozen. Caramelized onion from a can. And again, you know, talking about experience, you know, I don't know how many people are really, you know, when they're making dinner at home, how many people are saying, oh, I, uh, I charred off some peppers for dinner, and I took a few, uh, you know, a few hours to properly caramelize onions. I, I don't see it happening too often. Um, so, you know. Having these canned goods and having yep. these frozen goods that are beautiful in quality um, create that experience again. Like people aren't making this at home, so whether you're in the restaurant or the takeaway food, uh, it's an experience. So the next one, I'm gonna go. Do I need to move down here a little bit, maybe? Perfect. Okay. Nice. And I'm just gonna I'm gonna brush my potato cake with a little bit of a uh, a spicy chili sauce. Okay. Nice. So we got our spicy chili on there. Then. We're gonna hit it with those peppers and the onions. And as I start stacking this up, you, you see that if it doesn't go just right, and when I try to move this over, it's gonna be probably catastrophic, but we're gonna do our best with it. Okay. So let me put this down. Okay, I have some chicken. I, I just brushed it with some, uh, some curry sauce. 
grilled chicken. Uh, again, I, I used a pre-grilled chicken on this one. I cheated. And so brush with curry sauce. It's actually a pineapple curry sauce. So we have that potato cake with those great onion flavors. Uh, caramelized onions. We have the peppers. We have that really nice, it's, it's kind of sweet and spicy chicken there. And from there, again, we're talking experience. I took my peeler and I took some nice heirloom carrots and I shaved those carrots down. So you can see, again, is this something everyone's doing at home? Might not be, I don't know. Um, so now we have these beautiful carrots there. And I fried some chickpeas. Okay, so we're gonna do some chickpeas in with our, with our carrots. And chickpeas bring that great crunch. I just fried them off and, and just hit them with a little bit of salt. They're absolutely beautiful that way. And I'm gonna add a few scallions to it for color. I sliced my green onions, put them in some ice water so they do these, uh, these nice curls for us. Perfect. All right, put a few of those in there. Don't, don't wanna overdo it. Okay, and then I also have a, uh, a spicy, uh, spicy and sweet mango dressing. So a little mango dressing on there, okay? Now, let's stack this on top. Kind of gingerly here. Nice. Beautiful, okay. beautiful. Looking great. Right. And what we're doing here, I mean, we have those those vegetables that are a little more soft because um, you know the the peppers and the onions are softer. But we're bringing that texture back with the carrots as well as the uh, the chickpeas, right? Mm -hmm. And then to, to totally finish the deal here, seal the deal. I'm a big fan, always have been, of microgreens. I think they show really nicely. We could drop a few microgreens on that, and we'll just give it a little. Finishing touch again with our same dressing. Awesome. And not a bad, if I can hold it up here for you. Let's Beautiful. Me, yeah, let me get it a little better here for you, Peter. Um, not a bad looking plate, I think, right? Oh, it looks wonderful, David. And yeah, simple, simple, simple. I mean, whether you're doing it at home or whether you're uh, you know, working in the restaurant, this is not hard to, uh, to replicate. Now, here's the thing. I'm gonna try to get this same plating into my takeaway container here so I can ship it off. Let's see if I can't get it over to the container for us here. That's great. So you're going to take the products and deconstruct it and put it in the container. Well, I'm, not, I'm not going to deconstruct it. I just want to show that you can, oh, this might, I might be able to do this. Maybe, maybe. You can plate this, I lost a bit. Um, you can plate the same way for takeaway. That's kind of my point here, Peter, is that you know, if you were to get this at home, like this isn't the way everyone's plating everything is, you know, put put together and uh, tightened up like that. But you're right, deconstructed. Let me get you back up here. Deconstructed. You know, we could do that too. You, there's other containers out there where we can go ahead and, you know, we could put the elements of the dish, the different elements of the dish yeah, together, I, uh, as I, well as using you know little ramic plastic ramekins and things of that nature, so that you know what. If you were to send this away, this the, all these ingredients here, especially the idea of the, the pressing the home fries and all that, if you were to send that to somebody's home and said, here, this is the how you do it, one, two, three, four, um, that's a good time right there. That, that's fun to try that out. It's fun to, uh, you know, up your skills and, 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 you know, the finished product is fantastic. And I've seen it before where, uh, you know, different places where you can get the the instructions uh the method you uh, uh, the ingredients the instructions and as well as photos to go along with it so you have at least uh you know you know what you're trying to achieve here a little bit a few different op options because otherwise you're going to look and go i don't know how to plate it uh so this way yep. uh, you at least have a, a fighting chance to uh to just totally nail it and have a beautiful looking plate so again yep. that's experience that's you know just yep. those little little small details there uh, and that plate didn't cost us very much money so we're also going to make money if we're serving this in a restaurant oh, we're going to yep. make money you know doing this so it's i think it's great yeah excellent that's great it's an awesome dish dave and it's kind of funny but, uh, you know so i know we talked earlier that uh, dave and i had a little conversation uh, ahead of time but we really didn't dial in on who's doing what because it's not what this show is all about uh you know we're here dishing it out so dave this is what i did i did do the step by step I attached the business card and a little thank you note on the back from the staff who created the meal. And it does show the step-by-step -step on how to put together your dish. So that's kind of what I'm doing. So 
one of the things that I had going on to, uh, before I came was I was uh, I was getting my pork chops ready. So I got them here sitting in the frying pan. This is the stuff that you don't see when you get your takeout and your third party, right? So here they are sizzling. They're going to go right in the oven and they're going to finish up before they would go in the takeout container. So pop that in there just like that. Off screen, you can't see it. But also the little things, and Dave, you chose some stuff that I had as well. So I do have the, the organic heirloom uh, carrots on my dish. I also have some, uh, some asparagus and prosciutto in mine that I, I know that people love to see and be able to do a quick little roll. And these are very popular to be able to do them as a, as a dish at home. But this is part of our vegetables and what we're gonna be creating for our takeaway, uh, which includes a breakdown and an ingredient list of exactly what was in my products that you'll see here with the onion and the carrot and the apple and the, and the uh, red cabbage that we're gonna do. So when we, uh, when we come right back, we're gonna, we're gonna take a look at my first dish and then we'll get right back over to Dave. So we'll be right back. We'll see you in just a minute. Craft hazelnut spread is here with the classic taste of roasted hazelnut, skim milk, plus a touch of cocoa. Perfect for a quick breakfast or an indulgent start to your day. As a decadent anytime snack, on the go, or even at the office or to create richly satisfying desserts, putting a new twist on your old favorite. Kraft Hazelnut Spread is made with no palm oil and is low in saturated fat. Chocolate Hazelnut Spreads are here to stay, and we're one of the fastest growing dessert ingredients, growing 18% in food service versus the previous year. And with snacking still a powerful trend, the demand for chocolate hazelnut spread filled pastries remains high. Elevate your breakfast, innovate your desserts, or do both. It's the convenient new way to enjoy the taste of chocolate hazelnut. Craft Hazelnut Spread. All right, fantastic. We're back. So I have uh, my, my, my dinner was just dropped off. Here it is here in the bag. Very similar to what you would see uh, coming to your door. So what I have here is uh, I have all of my products ready to go. So of course this is great to have. This is the secure label that's on the packaging so you know your food wasn't tampered with uh, when it was leaving the restaurant. Uh, so we have this one here. We'll get to that one in just a minute as we uh, talk to Dave about what he's got going on. But here's what we're doing here. So we're gonna open this up. You see it. Inside was your little coaching sheet on how to put together your products with the little thank you note. This was really important to being able to dress up the stuff. So. You can see here, here's uh, the uh, part of the meal and the appetizer. So what I included in here was the latex gloves, a couple napkins, right? These were very important. I got my little uh, fried items here in a little bag on the side, right, that you would see. So the first part of this dish was a great Mexican uh, shrimp cocktail. So the customer has a, a glassware at home. This is what they're seeing. We have the marinated coleslaw in these perfect little containers, the fire roasted salsa from Casa Solana, and a beautiful Cisco Portico shrimp. So look at those babies in there. So the idea of the customer being able to take the dishes here and not just have them, everything set up and ready to go for them to put on. They got the marinated coleslaw going in the bottom of the dish like this, right? They got the instructions to put the salsa on now, put the salsa in the middle. And then they got these gorgeous poached shrimps that came on the side so that they are able to put together this beautiful steakhouse cocktail at home uh, in a beautiful little presentation glass that they took out of their own bar. And then they had this dish here ready to go. So shrimp cocktail finished up at home, real easy for you to do, getting your products delivered, three party. And then uh, there it is, wonderful, being able to just dip and eat. So Dave, why don't you go uh, take us back to your next dish. That sounds, that sounds good, Peter. Good. That, that yeah, looks that amazing looks too. And uh, the thing that's amazing about what you just did there, I think, is you know there's always a, there's always a new uh, season. You can keep it seasonal. You can there's always a new occasion. Uh, you, you know the holiday season is around the corner, so you can really capitalize uh, on some holiday dishes and by you know packaging it up beautifully and and giving some great instructions so you know somebody can be a, a hero in their own kitchen at home. It's unbelievable, especially during the holiday. So that, that's a great, great take on that, Peter. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, I'm going to do something, you know, I think this is, this is really cool. Um, I'm gonna take a few raviolis out here that I have in my pot, and it's a, it's a, smoke, it's a smoke, smoke mozzarella, mozzarella ravioli. ravioli. 
Get those out. And I already have some wild mushrooms and caramelized onions going in my pan here. Okay. And what I'm doing with this dish is I'm going to play to the idea again of uh, that smoked mozzarella. Okay, so you know something again, like creating an experience. You know, I have some wood chips here that I <laughs> I lit on fire earlier today, and uh, <laughs> they, they really went on fire. Actually, as a matter of fact, so I'm gonna try to keep it under control here um, as I like these again. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just plate this relatively simple dish, um, and I'm going to add some smoke to my my takeaway container just to have it just kind of permeate into some of the ingredients. Okay, so let's get to plating it. Okay. Awesome. Let's get to it. So I have, uh, again, caramelized onions and wild mushrooms. Uh, the same caramelized onions from my previous dish, uh, and then some wild mushrooms that, that are IQF, and uh, just beautiful. And they come with a, like, a nice little uh, you know, broth to them, essentially. So that's what's in my pan. I do have a touch of garlic butter. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. I'm gonna add in my raviolis, and we'll just give them just a little, little toss here. And what I want here is a dish that is not just really overly saucy. What I, what I want is just to have, be able to see the ingredients. That's what I'm looking to do here. And I'm gonna pop in a few scallions. And another thing I did, believe it or not, um, I had dropped in some roasted garlic. Again, IQF roasted garlic, if you can believe that one. Um, but just drop that right into the pan. So you have really, really deep flavors there from the wild mushrooms caramelized onions, roasted garlic, really deep flavors. And again, our ravioli is a smoked mozzarella ravioli, like I mentioned. And this time around, I'm gonna be certain that everything turns out and it, it and hits the, the right plate here the right way. So Perfect. I'm gonna plate it in my, uh, my takeaway container. Let me just free up a little bit of space here for us. And there we go. Awesome. And let's get that in our dish. And if, if I can, you know, these mushrooms, as I put that down, I don't know if you can, you can't really see it. They're just truly beautiful. So that's the thing. I would never, I would never stick my nose up at, at some of the beautiful frozen uh, products that are available these days. It's not, not the, the old stuff that you, you remember. It never lets you down, right? No, absolutely not. So let's stack up our, our wild mushrooms here. And we have a little bit of that broth we're gonna get on it. Beautiful. And great comfort food too, beautiful. That's that's exactly it, Peter. So let me just get you in there. Uh, wild mushrooms and you know, it's just, it's just so deep and rich in flavor. And you said it, it's comfort food. So going into uh, this chillier weather, um, how cool did you say it was where you were today? How cold is it? It was minus 25 this morning here in Winnipeg. <laughs> That's unbelievable. I, well, I wasn't happy with the uh, the seven degrees, seven Celsius today, but uh, I guess it, it could be worse apparently. Um, so I'm gonna add a little bit of ricotta cheese on on top of my my mushrooms. So let's this is where we're at here. Okay, and I, it's kind of funny. I, I guess I guess we took a page out of each other's book here. I have both uh, crispy uh, prosciutto and salami. And I'm just going to cr crumble some of that over top of our dish. And again, so to do this, I mean, we're just rendering it down. We're taking our, our, uh, our, our prosciutto and rendering it down in the oven. And again, not something you're probably doing at, at your home, right? It really probably, you know, not, not on your things to do. So, right? right? And, and that's it. We're bringing that different experience. We're bringing different textures and flavors that, again, if, you, if you're at home and if you're at home and you go, oh, you know what, this is okay, but I, I could have done it a lot better. Right. Um, not ideal, right? So yeah. here, here's, here's the final final piece of this puzzle. I'm gonna light my torch. Nice. Maybe. Chef's playing with fire, it's always great. Hey. <laughs> I might not be lighting my torch, Peter. Oh, that's all right. Oh, there we go. Awesome. Uh, this lighter's seen some things. There we go. So we have our torch going, and we have our wood chips, and we're just going to get a little bit of a smoke going. 
and I'm actually using a, a smoke box here, so it is safe. So I have some wood chips going. See that? And all nice. we're going to do, um, and I'm doing it the easy way. So the easy way here is using something like this. And I'm just going to kind of capture some of that smoke before we close off our lid. And the thing you could do if you were into this type of cooking and you wanted to use smoke more often, a smoke gun is a beautiful tool um, that, that really makes it so simple for you. So this is the, the easiest way to go about doing it if you don't have uh, you know any special tools. Um, yep. But you could also go ahead and get yourself a smoke gun and just fill that thing with smoke. So there you have it, guys. Um, just you know, playing to that smokiness uh, that's already in the, the mozzarella, the smoked mozzarella in that pasta. Awesome, David. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Well, what I've done now is, of course, uh, we've seen everything sort of going on here, and I sort of took everything out of the, you know, this was a deep dish pizza box. And uh, some people are, uh, as you see, some people are actually turning their, their pizza box inside out. So it's like a craft box where they can actually write a message on the box or thank the folks or put a little cartoon or any of that kind of fun little stuff. But I'm just going to turn you down here so you sort of see what's going on in my cutting board. So here was my container that I had with all of the side veg and the prosciutto wrapped asparagus and the carrots. And then, of course, the gorgeous pork chops that were cooked off right ahead of time delivered. So these are all in uh, either recyclable or biodegradable style containers. We have our bacon and carrot and cabbage slaw that we made. We had the, the Yukon Gold mashed potatoes that we used. Uh, this is a fresh product, uh, so it's already ready to go, easy for chefs to deal with. We have a great jus uh, that we have with all the stuff that's going on. And then we had our boysenberry uh, concoction that I used here now for what we're gonna do for our flambe. So we had our frying pan going on here and uh, we, this is the instructions for at home or whether it's done ahead of time, it goes into the hot frying pan like this here. We get a little fire going like that. This is also just fantastic. You can finish kind of this kind of stuff up at home and uh, the customers are, are really being able to pizzazz up their little bit of what's going on, whether it's family time or date night, the kids will love that stuff. And that's our jus that gets poured over the top of this dish. So the, in the coaching uh, sheet that we had, we, uh, we coached the customer about warming their plate. So we have the plate here warmed up uh, in the oven and all the products were here ready to go. So being able to plate it like a chef with the instructions, we were able to put the product down on the plate like this. We took our carrots and we put them along this way here on top. This one was uh, talked about the mashed potatoes. So they were able to take uh, something like this, like a Cornell and put it right on top. And then uh, they were able to take their pork chop here and stand it up. Just like you see at the restaurant, pretty nice. But also on the side, what we did is we had some tempura apple rings that we uh, that we sent along with the, uh, with the product. So this was here for the garnish to go next to the pork, right? We had our slaw that we had on the side with the bacon. And this went just on the back side here next to the potatoes, just like that. And of course, also we had a little bit of bag of fresh herbs. So we had some fresh thyme that we sent along with the, uh, with the product just so that we can finish it up. So basically what the customer was doing is they flambéed their boysenberry, they had their beef jus, just like that all finished in there really nicely and they can go around the plate with their jus or they can pour it right on top, whatever sort of your instructions are for the customer at home, right? They have their napkin inside for wiping the plate. So you got to think of all the little things for the customers able to be executing it just like a chef at home. We have our little thyme sprig that we, uh, we put on our plate and there it is there. So we had our tomahawk pork chop ready to go. I think that looks pretty good. What do you think, Dave? I think that looks awesome, Peter. And what I really do like about it, all the instructions and, and the way you know, you're able to create that restaurant dish at home. I think what that does too, it, it sells it to, to a customer that you really care about food in, in your restaurant. You, you're, you've taken the time to say, hey, I wanna teach you how we would do it. 
and I think that is incredible. And you know what? You're you really. It's not just. It's one thing to just go ahead and order some food and eat it and you're done and you, you don't think about it again but if you can actually walk away from it and say like i learned how to to, to flambe this like that's incredible and you can you can te now you can teach someone else i, I do feel though with the flambe that if uh, 911 should be somewhere at the bottom of the instructions just just in case <laughs> you never know right but uh i think regardless i think that's a, a beautiful plate that anyone would be proud of uh if they'd enjoy eating it and they'd be even more proud to uh to piece it together and uh just a real quick story i used to work for somebody uh in the city and i was you know her her personal chef and i can tell you that uh, she used to uh ask me hey, can you put it together just in a certain way i it was almost every thursday night can you just make it so i can finish it off and we won't tell anyone are you good with that and i i said absolutely i'm good with that you you do what you want with it and she, so yeah. um you know what if if somebody wanted to even do that go for it right uh, absolutely. So we're, you know, we want to make make sure that all the restaurants have all the tools, have all the proper containers, and be able to get something like this to a customer. Because I can tell you, their experience of being able to finish or at least plate at home, this is really going to get them calling again and again. And that's why we wanted to make sure they could contact the chef or contact whoever's card you were attaching to that stuff, and and have an absolutely great experience. So we had our tomahawk pork chop, and our, of course our Mexican. Uh, Mexican uh, shrimp cocktail here today. So, David, thank you very much for uh, being on my guest today on Dishing It Out. We really thank you very much and uh, wish you the best in uh, the holiday season coming up. So, fantastic and hope to see you again sometime. Thank That's you, uh, it. That's from, it. Uh, oh, yeah, thanks, Dave. Uh, fantastic. Rushing her out of here and getting right back to work. Thanks for coming to see us at Dishing It Out. I'm your host, Peter Eckler, and we'll see you again. Thanks, everyone.